So let's look at truth tables. Okay, uh, truth tables are one of many ways to represent um, a Boolean uh, function, or I should say, any form any form of um, uh, Boolean function. So some logical function. When I say Boolean, I'm implicitly saying some sort of logical function. So, okay. So truth tables are, are one way of doing this. And this is actually probably the most, truth tables are the most uh, straightforward way to represent logical functions. So let's take a look at how those work. So truth tables are tables. So we start out with some lines. So we have over here in a truth table, we have essentially four uh, quadrants. Um, and let's just take a look at what those quadrants look like. So <clears throat> we have on the left hand side, we have our inputs. Then we have this line over here, and that's important. It's important to have a line to separate our inputs from our outputs. Now you can have one or many inputs, so you can have one or many outputs. So it could just be one input, one output, multiple inputs, one output, you name it. You can mix and match, but inputs go on this side on the left, outputs go on the right hand side. Okay. Now, uh, in, this, in this first row here, over here, what we have actually is um, different things. So our inputs uh, are always going to be expressed as variables. Um, so uh, these might be things like um, x and y, say. Our outputs are going to be expressed typically in terms of some sort of uh, expression. <laughs> Wait, expressed in terms of an expression? Wait, um, in terms of a, um, I should say, a, um, a uh, Boolean expression. So this will be things like, um, so I'll write this out. The notation I haven't really gone over yet, but um, this is going to be like x and y. Uh, another possibility would be uh, x or y. Okay, so uh, I haven't gone over the notation yet, but just read this as x and y. This is x or y. Okay. All right. The other part of our, so we have our inputs, these two variables here. We have our outputs, so these are actually two different uh, columns here for outputs. So here we have two inputs, two outputs. Okay. What we also have over here uh, in our truth table, for our inputs we have, uh, essentially we have to figure out well, how many inputs do we have. So and we figure out, well, how many inputs do we have? So, so we have the number of inputs. In this case, we have two inputs, okay? So the number of inputs determines how many rows are going to be in the truth table. Truth table for short, TT, okay? So, um, and the way we do that is we say, well, two to the number of inputs is going to be the number of rows. So, so I have two inputs. So two squared is going to be four. So I need four rows. So let's just do that. And the way we do this, by the way, is we count. So uh, I'm going to count in binary. So I say zero one zero one, and over here I say zero zero one one. So you notice what, what I'm doing here is I'm counting in binary. And I'm always going to do this when I write a truth table out. Here's why. If I write a truth table out where I always keep this order of these inputs the same, the order of the outputs, I can just look at it and I can know what function I'm dealing with. So here's an example, x and y. So I haven't really gone over x and y's, but uh, think of it like this. As long as both x and y are true, then um, 
that means that uh, x and y is also true. So, with, so like for here, we say zero, 0 and 0, well, they're not both true. That, that, it's not the case that all of them are true, so I'll say 0. Likewise, uh, 0 and 1, well, nope. Same thing over here, but 1 and 1, those are both true, so I'll say 1 over here, okay? So this is how we write our output. So we basically evaluate row by row. So we look at this function, and we look at each input uh, to figure out what our output's going to be. So that's how we figure out um, uh, how to fill out this column here. Same thing over here, so like x or y, um, notation I'm using plus for or. <coughs> uh, I don't read this, by the way, as x plus y. I read this as x or y. Likewise, I don't say x times y. I say x and y. But over here, I'm going to look at each input. So I have x is 0, y is 0. So um, as long as either of these is true, then I'll write out 1, otherwise I'll write 0. So 0 or 0, well, mm, it's false. But OK, yeah, I have a, a 1 here, so I'll say okay, 1. 1 or 0, that's going to be a 1. And finally, 1 or 1, that's not going to be a 1. OK? So that's um, how I figure out the output. So again, basically, the output, we evaluate our expression. Expression uh, for each uh, input by row. So in other words, um, I go row by row to figure out what my output is going to be. And, and I can do that because I know I've enumerated all possible inputs because I've counted in binary. And when I count in binary, I can guarantee that I've looked at every possibility because I say, well, I'm going to go from 0, which is this guy, to 1, to 2, to 3. And that's all four possible inputs. So, very important thing. If you don't uh, draw your truth table this way, it's not a truth table. You have to label your inputs on your left-hand side, and you also have to count in binary. Um, if you don't do that, it's not a truth table. It's just numbers on a page. Okay. Okay. So, let's take a look then at... Um, what a truth table might look like if we have just one input or if we have three inputs. So let's, let's move over a bit. So suppose I have just one variable. So I have x. Okay. So let's draw this out. There's only two possibilities, 0 or 1. right? Because And we just counted a binary from 0 to 1. So those are two possibilities. 2 to the 1 is equal to 2. We have two possibilities, 0 and 1. Suppose I were, were to write out not x. By the way, this is our notation for not x. So it's just a line. So we read that as not x. So basically, not x is flip the bit. So we have 1, 0. OK. So far, so good. Um, OK. So this is a, it's a very simple truth table. We have only one input, one output. Um, and we evaluate each row here in terms of this input. So if I see a 0 in my input, I want to evaluate this expression for that row. So I say, well, here's a 0, x is 0, so not x should be 1. When x is 1, not x is going to be 0. Straightforward. OK. Um, what else? Suppose I have three inputs. So I have x, y, z. OK. And I count in binary. So I need, let's see how many rows do we need. I have three inputs over here, right? So I need 2 to the 3. I need 8 uh, rows here from 0 all the way to 7. So I have 0, 0, 0. OK, so I'll say I'm just going to count in binary really quick. And you should count in binary this way because it's faster than doing it the old, you know, left to right, left to right versus top to bottom. It's much easier to go top to bottom column wise. And suppose I have a function like this. Suppose I have, suppose I have um, x <coughs> and y or z. Let's say. Okay. Uh, now, in order to 
evaluate this expression, right? So by the way, I haven't gone over this yet, but um, might as well go over it now. Um, when we do and, we do, just like in good old algebra, we do our uh, this operation first before we do this operation. That is, we do our, like we would do multiply before addition. So uh, in Boolean algebra, so in Boolean uh, expressions, we do our ands before we do our ors. So um, now this is kind of a hairy expression to evaluate. So I'm going to actually break this down a bit. I'm going to say um, x and y, and then I will worry about this guy. So I'm going to do just this one first. So uh, I'm going to look at just these two columns, so x and y, so 0 and 0 is just going to be 0, um, and same thing over here, 0 and 1 is just going to be 0, okay, the only one that's going to be true is actually these last two rows over here, so I should remember these rows, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so by the way, this is just the decimal equivalent of this, so 7 in binary, 1, 1, 1, is, you know, this is 7 in binary, 1 and 1. Likewise, 4 in binary, 1 and 1. Okay. Alright. Okay. Now, if I order this, what I can do now, so you notice what I did, right? I split this up. I said, okay, well, we're going to do this first, and then we're going to do this operation here. So if I look at this in isolation, it's pretty easy to figure out. And then if I want to order this with z, I want to compute this whole thing, I can take a look at this column here this column here, and I just or it with z, so that's what I'll do, I'll say, well here's z, and here's this column, so as long as any one of these two are true, I'll write a 1 here, so, well, nope, okay, I'll write a 1 there, I'll write a 0 there, I'll write a 1 here, a 0 there, a 1 there, and finally over here I have a 1 and a 1. So there you have it, this is three variables, uh, in our tree table, we have eight rows, and uh, we have you know, three inputs, and we have these two separate outputs, but really our original output was just this guy, but we use this, we can use some additional columns just to do computations, so to compute intermediate results, so this is an intermediate uh, output, and it's useful to do that just to in to make sure you're doing it correctly so I mean you you probably don't want to try to compute this directly it's do one thing at a time and you're more likely to succeed at what you're trying to do so there's a hint as to how to do these if you're doing them manually okay I'm trying to think what else to say about true tables um, that's all I can think about but the key thing again is when you draw a true table you have you know you draw your four quadrants. Basically you take two lines, okay, and you figure out what your inputs, you know, enumerate your inputs, <laughs> okay, uh, determine your outputs, and so when I say enumerate inputs I'm just saying, okay, how many inputs do you have? Okay, and your outputs just what are the expressions? So, uh, so the finally, the next thing is you know, counted binary. Um, for your um, however many inputs. So if you have like say three, um, enumerate the inputs and, and count them. So count them. And then so count in binary. Um, to 2 to the um, number of inputs minus 1, right, because again if we have 8 inputs we go from 0 to 7, so, and then last but not least compute your outputs use intermediates if necessary Okay. There you go. So that's how you draw a tree table. So this is how to draw a truth table.
basketball. A very compact way, well not necessarily compact, but a, a very common way to describe a logical function.